Although it was time to reboot planet Earth, there was still a small group of people who remained faithful to God. Noah was a good man who followed God. According to the Bible, he lived blamelessly. Noah and his family were chosen to warn the people on Earth of the impending flood. God instructed Noah to build a large boat called an ark, two in which to save themselves and animals of every species. This was an act of God's mercy and recognition that there were still some who sincerely followed God's leading no matter what the cultural pressures were. True to form, Noah accepted the call. He decided to follow God no matter how strange or intimidating the request.
building the ark took tremendous fate. For starters, it was to be an enormous construction, 510 feet long by 50 feet high, built entirely of copper wood, a type of cypress that does not rot easily. Okay guys, so now we're going to the second floor of the ark. Let's go! We are on the second floor of Noah's Ark and as you can see from here, you can see a beautiful view of the desert and a lot of antelope over there guys. If you can see, there's a zebra, there's a donkey, there's everything. It's beautiful. Noah was 600 years old when the promised flood finally came. Here are the birds. The birds. Yeah. And we have here all different kinds of birds. The rain poured and the flood waters rose and filled the earth. Just like in Noah's time when God instructed him to take the animals, one male and one female, in order to multiply the earth again after the flood. After the flood, God has given us a second chance to fill this earth again and to start all over again. It's a new start. It's new life, new start, a new beginning for Noah and his family. And as we can see today, human beings populated the earth and that's why we are living it right now. The Bible says that God told Noah to take on the ark two of every kind of animal and seven pairs of the clean animals and flying creatures. Recent studies estimate the total number of living and extinct kinds of land animals and flying creatures to be about 1,500. With our worst-case scenario approach to calculating the number of animals on the ark, this would mean that Noah cared for approximately 7,000 animals. So 
Noah and his family went into the ark because of the coming flood. So it's a very unique ark because it's an ark in the middle of the desert. And as we all know, Noah's ark settled down in Mount Ararat, which is in Turkey. But since you will be here in Israel, which is the Holy Land, why not visit this unique Noah's Ark in the middle of the desert? Beautiful. Then the flood began. The fountains of the deep broke open and the windows of heaven were opened. Rain poured for 40 days and 40 nights. The waters rose until every high hill on the earth was covered. Everything that lived on land perished in the raging flood waters. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days, and God remembered Noah and the animals on the ark. The waters receded and the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. After sending out a raven, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry ground, but it came back having found nowhere to perch. After seven days, Noah sent it back out and it came back with a fresh olive leaf in its mouth, and no one knew the ground was drying. Do you know the first thing Noah did when he and his family came out of the ark? He made an offering to God. And God made a promise. I promise that never again will all people and animals be destroyed by a flood. I am putting my rainbow in the clouds. And when the rainbow appears, I will see it and remember this promise of mine. So when you see a rainbow, what should it remind you of? Yes, God's promise that He will never destroy the world again by a great flood.